The introduction of the MQ-25 Stingray, a cutting-edge robotic tanker designed to operate seamlessly from aircraft carriers, represents a monumental shift in U.S. Navy strike capability. This uncrewed aerial vehicle, or UAV, often described as a flying gas station, is not merely an incremental upgrade. It is poised to fundamentally reshape the tactics and strategic reach of carrier warfare, especially in the context of the Pacific Theater, extending the strike range. The primary and most critical function of the MQ-25 is to serve as an aerial refueling platform. Currently, the U.S. Navy relies on FA-18 Super Hornets, diverting these precious strike fighters from their combat role to act as buddy tankers. This approach significantly reduces the number of aircraft available for a strike package and limits the operational radius of the entire carrier air wing. By offloading the refueling mission to the specialized uncrewed Stingray, the Navy can instantly unlock the full strike potential of its F-35C Lightning IIs and FA-18E-F Super Hornet. This capability is vital in an era of peer competition where adversaries are developing advanced anti-access-slash-area denial capabilities designed to keep U.S. aircraft carriers at bay. The MQ-25 allows strike aircraft to launch, top off their fuel tanks at a safe distance from the carrier, and push hundreds of miles further into contested airspace, significantly extending the effective U.S. Navy strike range and making the carrier a more survivable and potent platform. The Pacific Ocean is a deceptive adversary. To the casual observer, it is a vast, beautiful expanse of blue, covering 63 million square miles. But to a naval strategist, the Pacific is a tyrant. It is a theater of war defined by a single crushing variable, the tyranny of distance. In this arena, fuel is not just a commodity, it is the currency of life and death. For decades, the United States Navy has ruled these waters with its supercarriers, floating cities capable of projecting power anywhere on the globe. But in recent years, a shadow has fallen over the carrier strike group. The rise of long-range anti-ship ballistic missiles the so-called carrier killers developed by near-peer adversaries has fundamentally altered the geometry of naval warfare. The equation is brutal and simple. To survive, the American carrier must stay outside the range of these missiles, often forcing it to operate a thousand miles or more from the target. However, the strike aircraft on its deck, the F-A-18 Super Hornets and the F-35C Lightning IIs, have a combat radius of roughly 500 to 600 miles. This creates a deadly gap. If the carrier stays safe, the jets cannot reach the fight. If the carrier moves close enough to launch, it enters the kill zone. For years, the Pentagon has wrestled with this strategic checkmate. But now, on the windswept decks of the newest Ford-class carriers, a solution is taxiing to the catapult. It has no canopy, it has no seat, it has no pilot. It is a strange, alien shape, a cranked kite wing that looks like a slice of the future carved from composite materials. This is the MQ-25 Stingray. It is the world's first operational carrier-based unmanned aircraft. And while it carries no bombs and fires no missiles, it might just be the most lethal addition to the fleet in half a century. It is a flying gas station a robotic tanker designed to erase the tyranny of distance and give the U.S. Navy its long arm back. To understand why the Stingray is such a revolutionary leap, we must first look at the desperate improvisation that preceded it. Since the retirement of the KA-6D Intruder and the S-3 Viking in the 1990s and early 2000s, the Navy has lacked a dedicated carrier-based tanker. They allowed their organic refueling capability to wither, assuming that in the post-Cold War era, U.S. forces would always have permissive airspace and access to massive Air Force tankers like the KC-135 and KC-10. When the strategic environment shifted back to great power competition, the Navy was caught flat-footed. Their stopgap solution was a practice known as buddy tanking. 
they would take a combat-ready F-A-18 Super Hornet, a high-performance supersonic fighter designed for dogfighting and bombing, and strap heavy external fuel tanks and a refueling pod to it. Instead of fighting, this Rhino would launch, transfer its fuel to another Hornet, and then land. It was a staggering waste of resources. It was akin to using a Ferrari to deliver pizza. Approximately 25 to 30 percent of all Super Hornet sorties were being flown just to pass gas. This burned through the precious service life of the airframes, exhausted the pilots, and removed a significant portion of the carrier's striking power from the offensive line. The Navy was eating its own tail to survive. Enter the MQ-25. The Stingray is the answer to the Super Hornet tax. Built by Boeing, it is a machine designed with a singular, unglamorous, yet vital purpose – to carry 15,000 pounds of fuel a distance of 500 nautical miles, loiter, and offload it to waiting fighters. By taking over the tanking mission, it instantly frees up the Super Hornets to go back to being fighters. But more importantly, it nearly doubles the striking range of the carrier air wing. Visually, the MQ-25 is jarring to those accustomed to the sharp, aggressive lines of fighter jets. It is a thick, robust wing body design. The air intake is located on top of the fuselage, shielded from radar waves from below, a design choice that hints at its survivability. While the Navy has shied away from calling it a stealth aircraft in the same breath as the B-21 Raider, the Stingray possesses significant low-observable characteristics. Its shape is smooth, its engine is buried, and its radar cross-section is minimized. This stealth light capability is crucial. A traditional Air Force tanker like the KC-46 Pegasus is a modified Boeing 767 airliner. It is massive, distinct on radar, and utterly defenseless. In a high-intensity conflict in the Pacific, Giant tankers cannot get anywhere near the front lines. They would be shot down immediately by long-range air-to-air missiles. The MQ-25, however, can push forward. It can accompany the strike package of F-35Cs, Lightning IIs, deep into contested airspace, lurking in the gray zones where a 767 would perish. It brings the fuel to the fight. Imagine the choreography on the flight deck a ballet of chaos that has remained largely unchanged since World War II, now interrupted by automation. The yellow shirts, the aircraft handlers, are used to making eye contact with a pilot. They use hand signals to direct the aircraft onto the catapult. With the Stingray, there is no one to look at. Instead, the deck operators use a handheld deck control device, a ruggedized tablet that allows them to steer the drone on the tarmac. The MQ-25 obeys electronic commands, taxiing with precise, algorithmic movements. It aligns itself with the catapult shuttle. The blast deflector raises. There is no thumbs up from the cockpit, only a data stream confirming systems are green. The steam, or electromagnetic energy on the Ford class, builds, and the Stingray is punched into the sky. Once airborne, the drone enters its element. It is autonomous, but not independent. It follows a mission plan, navigating via satellite and inertial guidance. It climbs to the rendezvous point, orbiting in a silent, unwavering track. High above the Philippine Sea, a flight of four F-35Cs Lightning IIs approaches. They have launched from the carrier 600 miles back. Without the Stingray, they would be at their bingo fuel state, forced to turn around and head home. But today, they have a lifeline. The lead F-35 pilot spots the drone on his radar and then visually. The Stingray extends a hose and drogue refueling pod from its wing. The interaction is a marvel of human-machine teaming. The drone maintains a perfectly stable airspeed and altitude, unaffected by boredom or fatigue. It calculates the turbulence and holds the basket steady. The human pilot nudges the stealth fighter forward, engaging the probe into the basket. Fuel flows. In minutes, the F-35s are topped off. They now have the range to push another 400 miles, strike a hardened target deep inland, and return to the carrier. The MQ-25 has effectively turned the ocean into a runway extension. This capability fundamentally breaks the A-2AD strategy of adversaries. 
If a Chinese DF-21 missile has a range of 1,000 miles and the U.S. Navy can launch strikes from 1,200 miles away thanks to the Stingray, the missile battery is rendered useless. The carrier can stay in the sanctuary of the deep ocean, invisible and untouchable, while its air wing dismantles the enemy's defenses. But the MQ-25 is more than just a flying gas can. It represents a paradigm shift in how the Navy views unmanned systems. For years, the debate raged over the soul of naval aviation. Traditionalists argued that the complex, high-stakes environment of carrier operations required a human in the loop. They pointed to the unpredictability of landing on a pitching deck at night in a storm. How could a robot handle that? The Stingray proves that not only can a robot handle it, but it might also handle it better. The MQ-25 utilizes the JPALS, Joint Precision Approach and Landing System, and advanced algorithms to land. It doesn't guess, it calculates. It communicates with the ship hundreds of times per second, adjusting its throttle and control services to match the heave and roll of the deck with mathematical perfection. It doesn't get the shakes after a long mission, it doesn't suffer from vertigo, it just lands. This success opens the door for the future. The MQ-25 is the icebreaker. Once the fleet gets comfortable with a robot taking up deck space, launching and landing alongside manned jets, the evolution will accelerate. The Navy is already eyeing secondary roles for the Stingray. The airframe has hard points, it has space for sensors. While its primary job is tanking, a drone that is loitering near the battle space is a perfect platform for ISR, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. The Stingray could act as a communications relay, bouncing data between F-35s, which use a stealthy data link, and the carrier group, keeping the fleet connected without breaking radio silence. There is also the potential for kinetic power. While currently unarmed, the design could theoretically carry small standoff missiles or electronic warfare pods. A future variant could launch alongside the fighters, refuel them, and then peel off to jam enemy radars or drop sonoboys to hunt submarines. The modularity of the design means the Stingray is a blank canvas for the Navy's imagination. However, the road to the Stingray was paved with failure and political infighting. The program traces its lineage back to the X-47B, a sleek flying wing combat drone that dazzled the world in 2013 by performing the first autonomous carrier launch and landing. The X-47B was a demonstrator for a deep strike stealth bomber, a robot assassin. But the Navy got cold feet. They worried about the cost, the complexity of developing autonomous lethal logic, and the threat to the fighter pilot culture. They pivoted. They watered down the requirements, shifting from an unmanned carrier-launched surveillance and strike aircraft to the humbler Carrier-Based Aerial Refueling System, or CBARS. Critics called it a failure of imagination. They argued the Navy took a Ferrari and turned it into a milk truck. But looking back, this decision might have been a masterstroke of pragmatism. By assigning the drone a support mission, tanking, the Navy avoided the ethical and doctrinal minefield of robots armed. They focused on getting the technology to work, getting it on the deck, and solving the logistics of integration. Now that the MQ-25 is a reality, the leap back to armed drones, the upcoming Collaborative Combat Aircraft program, is much shorter and safer. The strategic implications of the MQ-25 extend beyond just range. They touch on the very survival of the carrier as a concept. Critics have long argued that the supercarrier is a dinosaur, a massive, expensive target waiting for a meteor in the shape of a hypersonic missile. They argue that in a war with a great power, the carriers would be forced so far back they would be irrelevant. The Stingray is the rebuttal to that argument. It buys the carrier time and space. It allows the strike group to remain relevant in the missile age. It is the technological bridge that carries the 20th century concept of naval aviation into the 21st century. Furthermore, the Stingray changes the human cost of war. Carrier aviation is inherently dangerous. Every launch and recovery is a risk. By offloading the monotonous, high-fatigue mission of tanking to a robot, the Navy saves its human pilots for the missions that require human judgment, the dynamic, chaotic, split-second decisions of combat. 
it allows the air wing to focus its human capital where it matters most. As the first squadrons of MQ-25s integrate into the fleet, deploying aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt and the USS George W. Bush, the pilots of the F-35s and Super Hornets are learning to trust their new wingmen. At first, it is strange to fly formation with a machine that has no head inside the cockpit. It is eerie to see the control surfaces move without a hand on the stick, but that unease quickly gives way to appreciation when the fuel gauge is low and the carrier is hundreds of miles away. The Stingray is not flashy. It will never be the star of a Top Gun movie. It doesn't do barrel rolls and it doesn't dogfight. It is a blue-collar machine, a flying utility truck. But in the vast, unforgiving chessboard of the Pacific, the amateur studies tactics while the professional studies logistics. The MQ-25 Stingray is the ultimate triumph of logistics. It represents the moment the U.S. Navy stopped trying to fight the tyranny of distance with bravery alone and started fighting it with engineering. As it circles silently in the high atmosphere, waiting for its thirsty charges, the Stingray serves as a silent guardian, a force multiplier, and a harbinger of the autonomous future. The flying gas station has arrived, and because of it, the American supercarrier remains the apex predator of the seas. The reach of the U.S. Navy just got a lot longer, and for adversaries watching from across the ocean, the Pacific just got a lot smaller. Enjoyed the episode? Like and subscribe to Military Forces. For more in-depth content, your support helps us create more.